Hey, Devin, we're getting lunch, man. I told you to stop calling me that. It's they, they. Whatever, man. You want us to get you anything? Ooh, do they have organic hummus no. with. What about gluten free no. kale? Mm. What about. <sighs> Intolerant douchebag. Oh no. Not again. I just can't figure out why this keeps happening. Tim, another one of these stinking batteries broke. Again? That's like the third one this week. Yeah, I don't know. They're just bad quality. I have no idea why this keeps happening. All right. Here's another one. Try to be careful. Thank you. Back in business. Ugh. Stubborn little bastard. Nobody wants to go to the dealership and not come home with a brand new machine. <laughs> Absolutely not. But that's what I did my entire life when I used to go to my local Suzuki dealer and look at the Suzuki LTZ 400. That's right, this 2003 Z 400, I was just 12 years old when it was made and I could never get my hands on one of these things. But now, I finally have one. Now, truth be told, I didn't actually buy this thing. This was given to me because it's in such crappy condition. The guy that had this thing, he didn't even want it. <laughs> That's no word of a lie. This thing was literally given to me by a guy I met at Mid-America Outdoors this past year. His name is Michael Fisher and he does dirt bikes. He got this thing in a lot of like 20 machines. And uh, he was like, man, first off, I don't do quads. And if you get a look at this thing, you can have it. So we ended up getting together and he gave me this damn thing. And man, it was just in, it is in horrible condition. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Really though, everybody should aspire to be just like me because I was 12 years old when this was my dream quad and it only took me 20 years and mine's in freaking brand new condition. Let's take a closer look at it. These things really are cool, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say I used to go to the dealership and just stare at these things. The Z400 is like, it's sort of like an iconic quad. If you're into sport quads, usually you know what a Z400 is. Like when the 400EX was the top dog, the Z400 is kind of what dethroned it. And it had a very short lived life of being the top dog, at least in terms of four strokes, because you know, there was the 250R, the LT 250R, the Takati 4, and they all had a very short run and they kind of, when they went out of, you know, they stopped making those things. I think uh, 1992 was the last year for the two-stroke sport quads. Those things just, you know, people just kept running them things into the ground until pretty much like 1998, 1999 when the Honda 400EX came out. And even the 400EX really couldn't touch those two-stroke quads. So they were still running them. The Z400 kind of gave hope to the four-strokes. And it was just a faster, more refined 400EX. Came with more technology. It's got a liquid-cooled engine. 
as opposed to the air-cooled engine that was on the 400 EX. The suspension was updated a little bit. Now, in the 03, it really wasn't great. In fact, it's got these pogo sticks. I don't even think those are the original shocks, but even if they were, uh, the ones that came in 2003 were kind of not the greatest, but still, everything was kind of a step up to from the 400 EX. And if you guys are Dirt Wheels fans, in Dirt Wheels Magazine, they did a number of shootouts with the Z400 and the 400DX. They did it when it first came out in 03, and then they did it again in 2005, because in 2005, the Z400 and the 400DX both received revisions, and once again, the Z400 completely spanked the 400DX. Sorry, Honda guys. I, you know, I love the 400DX too, but um, it's just a more updated quad. Now, if you're gonna go with reliability, well, we're just not gonna talk about that. But yeah, just a really awesome machine, and uh, unfortunately, in 03, when it was, you know, becoming the, the, the top dog in the four-stroke class, uh, the 450R came out to back up the 400EX, and uh, the 450Rs were just way more powerful than the Z400, and you could kind of consider these Z400s like a down-tuned 450, at least in terms of technology. Now, this one has definitely seen better days. Um, I, I don't think that this really has that many hours. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, obviously, but... Uh, I just think it's been sitting outside for a really long time, probably like 20 years. You can see all this just just rust everywhere, man. It's just been sitting outside, uncovered, really, really dirty. I uh, This carburetor actually looks like it's not original. That looks like a replaced carburetor or something, and somebody probably tried to get this thing running. Oop. And we got, is there a plug even in there? Yes, I think so. I think there's a spark plug in there, but the plug boot is off. So probably somebody tried getting this thing started and uh, they just totally failed. Let's get this. Let's get these ratchet straps off of here so we can get a better look. At first glance, this thing really does look terrible, but I do think that there's hope. Now this is the original seat cover, I believe. You can actually see the outline here of where the original warning label was, or at least it's an OEM seat cover, but I'd bet this is the original seat, and you can see it's in beautiful shape. Let's see what's going on underneath. Hopefully no rats, no rats. Oh, baby! It actually looks pretty good. <laughs> um, from some of the other stuff that I've seen, this isn't bad. Not bad. Ooh, it's still a little bit tacky there. I did get a box of extra parts, and I do believe that we have the airbox lid. It's even mounted, I just don't know. My guess is they took the airbox and stuff off to swap out that carburetor because at closer look, I am fairly certain that that is indeed an aftermarket carburetor. So they were probably trying to get, oh no, man. Ooh. That'll, uh, that, that'll, that'll, we're just gonna pretend we didn't see that. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think that they were trying to get this thing running. Um, you can see this engine's got some Interesting corrosion and stuff on it. I'm a little bit worried. This doesn't seem bad. Like, that just seems like surface, ru surface rust. This is the worst I've seen. Uh, I wonder if that's because the wet seat foam was just sitting on there and in here. We really won't know until we sandblast it. I'm a little bit worried about the frame being unsalvageable. Oh, man. I just don't know. These things were not known for having the best frame. Um structural uh, durability, <laughs> especially up here. These shock towers, the upper, the upper mount, apparently they would break off. I have a fix for that, but uh, this could be, uh, we won't get, our, we, we're not gonna put the, the, the cart ahead of the horses here because, you know, this does look really bad, but when, it, when we sandblast it, this, it could be just surface rust. I don't, and, uh, I just don't know. We've got really nice ITP wheels. You can see the OG logo in there. They don't look dented or anything. They're just kind of tarnished, but you could clean those, uh, buff them, uh, send them out to get polished maybe, and they'll probably basically be like brand new rims. They look really, really nice. The hubs in there are actually pretty clean. Uh, if you come on the backside, you can see it's pretty clean in there too. Like, yeah, this is all rusty and stuff, but stuff like this and how clean the brake caliper is kind of tells me that this may not have that many riding hours on it. You can see this headlight was probably replaced. Ooh, these plastics are, they're not even bolted on. Um, but this, this looks like, I, I'm pretty sure that from the factory, 
These headlights come with a built-in piece of plastic. So this is this being white, it's probably a replacement. Maybe the old one cracked or something, and uh, he was able to get a cheaper one in white instead of yellow. Or maybe it was a white quad, and uh, these plastics are not the OEM ones. But I'm pretty sure in 03, they just had yellow. I'm not 100% sure on that. The shocks are, I'm 99% sure those are not Z400 shocks. If you look at the quad, it's kind of sitting low in the front. I think they're a little bit short, and it looks wide too. I believe that's the offset of these wheels. They're probably 3-2 uh, instead of 4-1. I don't really like that look, to be honest with you. I like the factory 4-1. Uh, it, it just looks better, and it actually handles a little bit differently too. Radiator looks nice and clean in there. Just kind of trying to get a good look. When we take this thing apart is really when we're going to start to see whether there's issues or not. Uh, foot pegs. Uh, that's another indicator that there's really not that many hours on this. Usually these would be kind of like worn down a lot more. Unless they were replaced, of course, but uh, I think it's just rust from sitting. All this corrosion and stuff on the engine. That's all stuff that we can fix, though. Hopefully. This old school One Industries graphics kit. Definitely can resell that. And the plastics, unfortunately, I think these are beyond saving at least uh, to my ability. They're actually, I thought they'd be brittle. They're just really sun faded to somebody. You know, they might be worth something just because they're functional. You could probably spray paint them and whatever, but I don't think those will ever be, I, I don't think I could bring those back. No way. Coming up here, this looks factory, this thumb throttle. Nice and smooth, that's a good sign. It could be because that uh, new fake carburetor uh, brand new grip. Looks like it's in great condition. I don't know if this is the Suzuki master cylinder up here. Probably. It looks like it's a name brand. There's a lot of these Chinese knockoffs, so it can be hard to tell. Uh, the bars are definitely aftermarket. I've also got this cool indicator, kind of like little dash thing made by Rocks. That's a company I don't recall, but that's nice. It's got the things for neutral reverse and your oil and then the ignition up here. And we've got a key, man. We've got a key, so we, it, you know, there's no way that this could have ever been stolen. Coming over here, I would guess that this is OEM because it's got the parking brake stuff on there. Somebody took the cable off, and I did notice in the back we do have a parking brake block off. It's a moose parking brake block off, if you can see that logo. And then up here, we've got the moose um, master cylinder cover. I bet you that was like a kit, like a block off kit that moose offered. And we do have a nice skid plate back here too, on the underside. It actually looks like it's in pretty good shape without standing the quad up. It doesn't look like it's super dented up or anything. Uh, chain is super rusty. Not that that really matters. That's an easy fix, we'll replace that. Um, we've got the original exhaust on here. And really, man, it's kind of in great shape. If this, here we go. Yeah, I mean, look at it. It, it really held up, like the exhaust tip is almost, if there wasn't rust on the inside here, it's like almost brand new, a little bit of rust back here, but uh, really that's, that's not too bad. Looks like we got up here. Ooh, man, it's not looking good with that. We're gonna have to get a tail light. Good bit of tread, but unfortunately, these tires are dry rotted. You can see the splits and stuff in the side and they leak air really, yeah, it's really super, pretty deep splits. I don't even think it'd be safe to run those. Sad, doesn't really look like they had much use at all. AC Nerf bars, they're in pretty good shape. Could vapor blast those and the net on this side these are these are just signs well looks like it's just probably from being dried out the threads just kind of ripped away it's a shame it really is i'm telling you and like looking at the cylinder the side of the cylinder doesn't look too bad i really just think this is a symptom of sitting outside without even a cover on it for god knows how long you know i would say you know this thing has been around for literally 21 years maybe 22, because sometimes the 23s were made in uh, 2002, the year prior. You know, it's probably, I would say at least 15 years it's been sitting outside. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, we've got to try to start this thing up. Now, this thing is in store for a full restoration because I mean, even though it only needs a little bit of work, I do think that it deserves a full once over and I've got a really good idea too. We're gonna hop to the computer in a second, but I think what we need to do is try to fire this thing up before we even start tearing it down. So we're gonna get to that in a minute, but let's hop over to the computer. I wanna go over the history of this thing because 
The Z400 is actually a really cool machine. And then we'll go into our build plans. And the seat foam is definitely wet. It is definitely wet. The Suzuki Z400 really is an iconic machine and it legitimately set the bar for performance in the sport ATV industry. It inherited some family genes from its older two-wheeled brother, the DRZ400. The Z400 would have a very similar 398cc four-stroke engine with a dual overhead cam and four valves. It had a five-speed manual transmission with tight gearing and it also had the reverse gear, something that the 400EX did not have. It had a sporty design and at the time it had long travel suspension. The Z400 was making just over 30 horsepower stock, and it all came in under 375 pounds. In 2003, this was big, and the Z400 was one of the first quads to finally give its two-stroke brethren a run for their money. If you're familiar with sport quad racing, the name Doug Gust should come to mind. Number 55. Doug would win several championships with the Z400 and have one of the longest winning streaks in national history. Unfortunately for the Z400 in 2004, it was quickly overshadowed by Yamaha's YFZ450 and Honda's new TRX450R. Now that being said, the Z400 was still competitive, especially if it was modified correctly. The Z400 debuted in 2003 and was produced all the way up until 2008 in its first generation, when in 2009 fuel injection was added and updated plastics, amongst some other small things. The second generation would run from 2009 all the way until 2014. Back in 2003, these things were under six grand at $56.99. And I mean, I guess for back then, that was a pretty good price. I mean, shit, the new YFZ 450Rs are $10,599. And that's just where they start. If I could get a Z400 for $5,700 new, I'd be buying one of these things right now. And to finish it all off, the Z400 was so cool that Kawasaki and Arctic Cat both had to copy and make exact replicas of the Z400. Well, that's not exactly true. From what I understand, the base of the KFX 400 and the DVX 400 was the LTZ 400. They just had different plastics. And in the DVX 400's case, I believe the seat was different as well. But essentially, they're the same quads. While the 450 class has a better recipe for faster times around the track, the Z400 really does have the perfect mix for having fun. It has a higher center of gravity than the 450, and also the front end is very light. That mix with a decent amount of power makes for the most fun four-wheelers, in my opinion. And I'm super excited to get this one running again. And yes, that is me back in the day, jumping a Z400 in my suit just before heading to a school dance. Now that you know a little bit about the Z400, let's have a closer look at the aftermarket support that's still available in 2024 and make a plan for our Z400 build. Welcome to the computer, or my laboratory, if you will. This is where I really design and make a concept of how I want my machines to look. Now, in doing some research for the Z400, I've discovered that there's a pretty good amount of aftermarket that's still available for these things, and that's putting me in a weird predicament because I have a different idea for this one. So let's pop up the computer screen here, and uh, I'm, this is actually a little weird. I'm editing the video that you guys are currently watching. So it's almost, it's like Inception. But uh, all right, let's, let's pull this up. Now, what I have in mind, I've got three ideas. First is our traditional idea. We can just go all out, modify this thing, put a big board kit on it and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Then there is the option of doing like the whole resto mod thing. But I feel like I've kind of out, outdone that or not outdone it, but I've just done it enough times to where I wanna try something different. With the resto mod, basically, we would take all the things that were issues in 2003 and with the Z400 in general, fix the issues with updates and still make it look basically like it did when it was brand new and maybe do some mildly custom graphics, ones that look like the OEM ones, but it has like my logo in it and stuff like that. And then the third idea that I had is ba basically making it 100% stock. So I wasn't kidding when I said that I used to go to the dealership and look at these Z400s on the showroom floor. Literally one of my childhood dream quads. I mean, I loved quads in general but the Z400 was just one of the ones, like I would, I would be flipping through dirt wheels in like the buyer's guide section. I was always looking at the Z400s. I just really liked them. So I thought it would be cool to make it 100% stock and really try to not even use Chinese knockoff parts. I, I don't like doing that regardless, but you know, in terms of you know reproduction parts, there's a lot of reproduction parts for this that are actually good parts, but I'd like to do all OEM, like down to the tires if we could. I have one little spinoff that I'd like to do with that, and that is making it like a dealer equipped model. If you guys have been to the dealership, whether it's for cars or quads or motorcycles, a lot of times the dealerships will have what's called a dealer equipped model and they come with really basic accessories. They're usually from the factory. So like in the case of the Z400, it would have the Yoshimura exhaust on it 
and maybe the uh, Suzuki had these OEM heel guards and they, they even had bumpers and skid plates, stuff that actually had OEM part numbers from Suzuki. And they would put those things, they would already be, be factory equipped at the dealership in the showroom and you could buy it right off the showroom like that. So that is kind of the aspect that I'm going for because then it's got a little bit of a custom aspect. When it's done, we'll be able to see just what a Z400 was like when it was on the showroom floor at a Suzuki dealer and it'll have that extra special touch of having some of the really rare aftermarket parts. So let's hop on the computer and uh, we will, let me, let, me, let me bring you through here. I'll show you what I found. This is crazy, honestly. So first off, I found this exhaust system. This is the actual Team Suzuki Yoshimura exhaust that, I mean, this is probably new old stock. I, it it kind of has to be. Like if you go, to, you can still buy a brand new Yoshimura exhaust. It doesn't look like this anymore though. This is the one that was produced back in the day. I'm interested when I, I already ordered this. I'm interested when it comes in the mail. You can see it says applications 2003 LTZ 400. It's got the original OEM part number right there. I mean, this is really, really cool. It was, it was not cheap as you can see, uh, <laughs> over $500 and with shipping and stuff, it's just not cheap, but the cool factor. It's just off the charts, man. This is gonna be so cool. This is exactly what you could expect to see on a dealer equipped model during this era. So this is gonna be like an era specific item. You can see it's got the little anodized spacer for, to, for mounting it up, uh, the stickers. It's even got an exhaust plug right from Yoshimura, which is, does it really get any cooler than that? I just don't know. And honestly, the exhaust is probably not that great because it was like a first gen. I think they changed it, but like again, the cool factor is there. We're not making this the best performing ATV. We want it to be, to be just like it was if you were to go into a Suzuki dealership in 2003. Now the next item I have here, and once again, I scored this, man. This is such a score. I got the OEM part number. You can see it right there, 99950-70509. Uh, it is, these are the OEM upgraded heel guards right from Suzuki, man. It has the original manual and everything. I mean, dude, check that out. It even says 2002. LTZ 400. I mean, this is super old school. There's the OEM part number. I was super stoked to find these. When I was getting the concept in my mind, I was like, one of the hardest things to find is gonna be those heel guards. I even contacted Cameron at Power Sports Nation and I was like, hey dude, I need you to be on the lookout for these things because they're super rare. And lo and behold, I got a brand new set and I even made an offer for 95 bucks. So I got them for 95 bucks plus tax, shipped. Killer deal, man, you cannot beat it. And then moving on, I have, I know you guys are going to be laughing at me, man. The original pogo sticks re removed from a 2003 Z400. I don't know what the hell is on that one in the garage, but I don't think their Z400 shocks or the springs were switch switched out or something. I don't like them and they're in bad shape anyways. It looks like all the bushings and stuff are blown out. These ones, however, are in really good shape and that's why I chose them. If you look at the metal in these pictures, I think we can take the spring and everything off of here. Um, I will powder coat the spring. If you look closely, you can see there's some rust on the spring. That's no problem. I can powder coat the spring. Um, the locking retaining rings, I, I can have those re um, uh, vapor blasted and zinc coated. They'll look like brand new. Same thing with the adjusting ring at the bottom. I can redo that. The bushings appear to be in really good shape. And the actual body itself, um, I've had OEM shocks. The Yamaha Blaster was a great example that looked just like this. And when you polish them up, they look brand new. So the only other uh, thing we'll have to be combating is the plastic um, dust shield inside. M maybe I can restore that and make that look new, or maybe that's a replaceable piece, I'm not sure, but I think we'll be good on the suspension. Yeah, they're gonna suck, man. They're gonna be pogo sticks. And again, I know you guys are probably like, oh, what a dummy, why would you buy those? So $35 for one side and the, s the seller had both sides. So it was like $75. Uh, after shipping and taxes, not bad, man. And and we'll be we'll be good to go, just like it was in 03 in the front. Now let's move into the plastics because the rest of the machine, we're, we're, there, I'm sure we're going to find parts that we're going to have to replace. Hopefully, all of the hardware is in good enough shape that I can send that to James at Moto Blast. Have that all rinks re zinc coated. It'll come back looking like brand new. Um, the plastics are the big thing, though. We'll start fresh here on Rocky Mountain ATV. This is my go-to location for OEM parts. We'll go to OEM Suzuki. We will do all-terrain vehicle, 2003 LTZ 400, 
and let's just go ahead and start uh, piecing together these plastics and see how much it's going to be. We've got the front fender here, Whew, 536 bucks, but in stock. Add the cart, 536.07. We are well on our way to being way more expensive than a set of Meyer fenders, but Meyer's not OEM. All right, let's check out the tank cover. Um, don't know if this is in stock. 58.91. Let's see. Sometimes when it says usually ships in seven to ten days, but you can still order it, that usually means that it's not in stock. So what we're gonna do is open up a backup page here. And we're gonna open up Partzilla. Partzilla is another great website for OEM parts. Uh, I usually do Rocky Mountain, but I do like to uh, price compare. Sometimes one of them's cheaper than the other one. And sometimes one of them has it in stock and the other one doesn't. So in stock is gonna be king. So even though if we ordered that on Rocky Mountain, it might, it, it's possible that we would get it. If, if they have it in stock here, we will order it from Partzilla. All right, so it's 14, let's see, 14. Ships in three to four days. Uh, oh, here we go, the yellow one is in stock. So, boom, $61, it's more expensive than Rocky Mountain, but you know what, add to cart. Let's go back to Rocky Mountain. I don't think we need any of this other stuff. The graphics kit, we are going to see if we can source that out outside of OEM because I don't think these are actually in stock. This is another one of those deals where it says seven to 10 business days. And I found a reproduction company that makes um, identical replicas to the OEM graphics and they're significantly cheaper. So for, for the graphics, I think we'll be okay doing that. And you can see even this one, like the little Z400 logo in the front, that one's not even available. Okay, so for the front fender, I think we are good. Now let's go to the rear fender and see if they have that in stock. Let's zoom in. We've got number one, 450 bucks. Oh man, we're gonna be like a thousand dollars already. Add to cart. We're at nine hundred eighty-six dollars and twenty-three cents already, and uh, that doesn't even include the side. Oh, this is tape. That's the sticker. Is there anything else that we need here for the fender? There, I saw we have these. Hopefully we don't have to buy these. They're thirty dollars a piece. If they're if they're too rotted, we might be stuck buying these fender supports and stuff. But let's take one thing at a time. Side cover K3, K4, and it is number one. Uh, it does not say in stock. So let's hop over to Partzilla. Number one, side cover yellow. They got it in stock for seventy eight dollars. Oh man, we're getting crushed here. We will add that to cart. And then let's see if they have left-hand yellow in stock. They've got it. So we are at $229 from Partzilla. And uh, man, we're almost at $1,000 on Rocky Mountain. I don't know that there's anything else we need. We've got these little foam pads that go in here, the cushions, $8 a piece. And there's six of them apparently. I mean, at this point, we might as well just get them, keep it OEM. The headlamp, that's that's something we're gonna need, unfortunately. I did see these on eBay. Oh, look at that, the centerpiece is replaceable. So we'll need that, that is $20. It does, is that in, it says not shipping. That's not good. Let's see if we can get it on Partzilla. Same thing on Partzilla. So if we can get this cross piece, we would be good. Let's see. We can go to trusty old eBay and get one there. Oh, this isn't Pokemon cards and stuff. Oh, what is this? This is what we need right here. This this does not look good. <laughs> Uh, this is, it's in euros. I, I don't wanna, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna not do that. So I guess for now, we'll just add this to cart and s see what happens. I added it to cart, so. Now the next thing cosmetically would be the seat. You can't unfortunately order a seat cover, which is kind of surprising, but uh, I've got a fix here. So if you type in the part number for the seat on eBay, believe it or not, there's actually an aftermarket seat made by Caltric. For $125 with free shipping, 
I would bet that this fits. You can see it's got a new seat latch and everything. I mean, oh, it's got all new rubbers. It's got everything, man. I mean, you talk about a, the best cost effective way to, would be to do this. But um, I bought the aftermarket seats before. I, I tried a couple of them for Banshees. Sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're not. The seat pans are like really flexible and you sit on it and you can feel the seat kind of like belly out like this. It's not good. And then probably you ride really hard and the seat will actually bend like this and it could, it'll, it'll fall off and stuff. So it might look good, but I, I just don't, we're not gonna do this. But I found this place that makes reproduction seat covers. It's even got the little warning label on there, uh, just like the factory one. So I, what, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna get one of these covers. And then if you guys saw the foam on the seat, it's in tremendously good condition, but you know, I'm sorry, we're, we're not gonna reuse the foam. Uh, Moto Seat does make reproduction foam. It's $100. They make it for the 03 Z400. I've used uh, Moto Seat foam on like 10 different machines at this point. It's it's probably the best factory replacement. And so I got you can get it in different densities too. So uh, the seat we should be good to go. And then the tires is another thing. They're unavailable, unfortunately. I did find these Doro DIK561 tires. They look pretty much just like the stock ones. I don't know if they're reproductions of the stock ones or not. It's, it's sad, man. We're getting two ply tires for this thing. But you know what? It's all in the name of reproducing an exact replica of the 2003. So we're gonna go and get go ahead and get the rear tires. The front tires I'm still searching for. I'm sure uh, I can find a reproduction of the front tires as well. I think they're actually 22s in the front and then these are 20 by 10 by nine. And I think that's about it, guys. So uh, pretty basic design. This is you know kind of what I want it to look like right here, this uh, OG 2003 Suzuki Z400. You guys let me know in the comment section below uh, what do you think of this idea. I think it's gonna be really, really cool, especially with those factory add-ons from the dealership. I just think it's gonna be really unique. It's gonna be like a museum piece, basically, and it'll just be cool to see it just like it came off the showroom floor. The only other thing we would need are the original hang tags. If we can get those and put them on the handlebars, Oh man, that would just be a freaking blast from the past. We, we are gonna have to get some OEM rims too, because we've got those nice ITPs on there. We can resell those, but uh, I think it'll look better if we just go straight factory with the rims, definitely. Investing thousands of dollars into cosmetic pieces for any project is always a good idea, especially before you know the condition of it or before you even get it. Kind of like what I did with the Corvette when I invested over $4,000 into solid billet aluminum wheels and new tires for it. You know, the engine was filled with water. Speaking of the Corvette, well, we were gonna put the Corvette in the garage, but I decided that if we put the Corvette in the garage, it's gonna take up all of the space that we have. It's gonna be up on jack stands and stuff, so if that project gets held up, it will literally stop everything from happening on the channel. So until the weather gets better or we get a bigger garage, we're gonna to stick to smaller projects. Anyways, all those cosmetic pieces that we just ordered for this thing are gonna mean nothing unless we can get it to run. So let's see if we can get these plastics off, which are not even bolted up and see what's going on underneath. I'd really like to see if we can get this engine to turn over. Yeah, they, uh, they were definitely in the midst of trying to get this thing to run because nothing is bolted up. Even these back plastics are just sitting on here. Oh man, Ugh. yikes. Wow, who would have thought taking off those old dingy plastics would actually make this thing look worse? but uh, it did. My God. Oh, geez. This thing has got whew, rot. Oof. All around where the seat was, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's because that damn seat foam was probably swollen with water, just hanging on to water. Oh, man. Ugh, dude, and here's those brackets. I was, I was looking at these when we were looking at the parts schematic. You can see the little rip broke a break right there in the metal. The penning, it, it, the problem isn't the rust. It's like the integrity of the metal. If it's, if it's rotted and rusted too much, even if we clean it up and refinish them, they're not gonna be strong. This side's not as bad, but it's still pretty ugly. The rubbers actually look really nice. Again, uh, well, little sign that there's really not that many hours on this machine. The frame, I'm actually 
I'm not as worried about. Now, this is actually, this could be good news here. You can see all oh, down here too, man. Uh, but the frame, I could be wrong here, but I was under the impression that O3 did not have a removable subframe. So maybe this isn't an O3. Let me double check the VIN. So this could be kind of good news. Maybe it's an O4. I think uh, they had some really bad frame issues in O3, possibly O4, where the integrity of the frame just like wasn't that great. I think the tubing was a little bit smaller in O3. I'm not 100% sure, but anyways. Oh man, this condition this thing sucks. All right, let's see, let's go to the 10th digit. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is a three. So indeed, this is a 2003. Damn. I wanna take the airbox off so that we have easy access to that carburetor. But before we do that, I gotta put air in these tires, man, because this thing has been such a pain in the ass pushing it around with the flat tires. But I wanted to leave it that way for your first impression because it just added to the overall sadness factor. And that is honestly the way that it came. It only holds air for like half a day, if you're lucky. It's almost like we're giving it a lift kit. All right, let's get this boot off of here. I think the whole air box will just go with it because I see a bunch of empty holes there too. I don't think this is bolted up. Nope. Got a uh, CDI is connected to the side of the air box though. So let me pop that off. Nope, you can see these were, they were not all the way in. So this was removed too. So definitely an aftermarket carburetor. If this were OEM, you would see Makuni written on the side here, and it is flat. So this is definitely aftermarket, and you can see how suspiciously clean it is in there. But that's um, not the worst thing in the world because maybe, maybe that'll enable us to start this thing up before we really start tearing it down. I noticed this too. Come on, you bastard. This is one of those little fuel filters, and it's not even connected. I wouldn't be surprised, if you look how new that looks in there, I wouldn't be surprised if they never even put fuel. Oh, oh, look at this. There's even a barb protector on here. I wonder if this was never even like run. I don't know, not 100% sure. They might've just popped this on here. This is probably a brand new carburetor. So what we can do is put an auxiliary fuel tank on this just to get some fuel going in there. I do feel that the there is a spark plug in there. Uh, we should probably just pop that out and see what the heck it looks like. Maybe I can get this, let's see. Oh, isn't that convenient? Very, very nice. This thing is practically completely torn down. I'm just waiting for a spider to take me out. Holy shit, man. Remember that thing I said about waiting for a spider to hop out and get me? Look at this dead bastard on here. Pew. Thank God he wasn't alive. Man, I hate spiders. Now there's lots of debris in this. So I'm just gonna, oh man, yeah, I can see the top of the spark plug, but I don't want dirt going into the cylinder when I pull the spark plug out. Oh my God. Wow, that thing was filled with water. Definitely old water. Well, good thing we did that though, because all that water would have gone right into the cylinder if uh, we pulled that spark plug out. Man, I can't wait to see what this plug looks like. It was loose, not loose, but it was not, it was barely snug. So somebody definitely had this out. Wouldn't be surprised if it's got a brand new plug in it because that's like the typical thing that somebody would do to try to get, oh, no, you can see it. It was running at some point. Let's get a little bit of WD-40 in the cylinder because who knows when this thing turned over last. Let's check out if it's got any Earl in here. Oh, it does. And it looks like fresh oil. Again, not too surprising if somebody was trying to get this thing started. That's like one of those basic things that a lot of people do. We are one step closer to full restoration. Let's plug this booster pack on here, see if we get power. I see some, some interesting wire and possibly rat bites. 
So let's just see if the dash even illuminates. Nothing. Well, one thing we can do without getting too into the electricals is jump the starter relay with a screwdriver and that should turn over the starter or blow up. Fire in the hole. Something's not connected. That was anticlimactic. It's weird. The dash light just came on. Maybe I just didn't have that jumper box connected. Well, shit. Fire in the hole. Nothing. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Fire in the hole. What the? Oh, oh my God. It turns over. This must have like a really bad connection. Or it's just struggling. It might be seized in there because, oh yeah, I smell burning. <laughs> you can see that dash light is on. Oh, and that, oh, there it goes. Yeah, so definitely it's getting power. This thing is like, the starter relay is pretty, pretty, pretty crusty, but still jumping those two should make the starter turn over. So the only thing I can think, it definitely made a sound there is that it, something is like seized in there. Maybe it just a little bit of slack came out of it and we heard that we heard it chug just a little bit. But when I held it on there, uh, it was just started to smoke a little bit and you could, you could smell it. So <laughs> probably not the best idea to keep doing that. Even though this is gonna be a full teardown and everything's gonna be restored, maybe if we can look this over and fix whatever's going on with the wires and break the engine free, if, if it is seized, Maybe we can get this thing running and have kind of like a pre-project before we tear it down. A couple weeks ago, I made a video laying out my entire collection of ATVs and dirt bikes. And in that video, I mentioned that I had these three helmets. These are my personal helmets. I really just didn't know what to do with them. Decided to throw them up on eBay starting at $20. And uh, I really just wanted to cover shipping. I didn't know what was gonna happen. And it was kind of crazy, man. Between the three helmets, there were like over a hundred bids on these things. So before I even get started, I just want to thank everybody that bidded on any of these because essentially the idea was to be a piece of channel member memorabilia, sign it, and it's something that can go in somebody's garage or you know in like an office or something. And it's like, oh man, yeah, if you, you watch a uh, you know the Mike Sabo YouTube channel, that's his helmet right there, like something like that. And uh, man, it, it was I I can't believe uh, how many bids there were. So anyways, I'm gonna run through and uh, just mention the winning bidders. We'll start with the KBC motorcycle helmet. This was won by. Bowden and he messaged back saying, hi, Michael, I would like it to be signed on the side of the helmet. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you for inspiring me to do my first quad build. I did a complete build on my 93 Warrior over the summer, everything powder coated. I've been watching your videos for three to four years now and I love the content and the effort that you put into making it. I don't have YouTube, a YouTube channel, but if you could shout out my TikTok, that would be great. It's clapped quads 36749. So I appreciate it, Bowden. Uh, seems like an awesome dude. And I also got pictures of his warrior, which I will put up on the screen now. So awesome job, Bowden. And he said to sign it right here. It actually came out pretty good. <laughs> I was like signing things. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new to this still. Uh, occasionally, Somebody will ask me to sign something. But that looks pretty cool, so that should look good up on the shelf or whatever you decide to do with it, Bowden. So let's move on to the next one. This was purchased by Sam. And this is pretty cool. Sam says, hey Mike, if you wouldn't mind signing the helmet where you think looks best, I trust, I trust your judgment. The real reason I purchased the helmet is a late Christmas present for my cousin who is a massive fan of yours. He actually introduced your content to me and it's kind of been a way for us to relate because we both love quads and love watching your sick builds. So I just think it would be the perfect gift but he doesn't know that I bought the helmet, so would you mind shouting out his Instagram and have it sort of be like a surprise as he watches your channel? So I think that's pretty awesome uh, that he bought it as a gift for his cousin. And I do have the Instagrams here, so um, the shout out, it's Mitchell Real. So Mitch, this helmet is for you. And Sam, his Instagram is Sam underscore fan underscore club 11. So pretty awesome story. And he said, I could choose where to sign this thing I don't know, you guys be the judge. <laughs> I think it looks good. Okay, so this one was won by Luke, 
And Luke messaged me back. He said, hey, Mike, it's an honor to get a chance to bid on something like this helmet. When I seen that you were trying to sell, I just knew I had to have it. I love to collect things that I enjoy, and you and your YouTube channel are one of my favorite things to watch. The way you pay very special attention to detail in your builds inspires me to treat all of my work with such passion. Again, thanks for the opportunity and chance to speak with you. And if you would like to sign the, the back of the helmet right above where the goggles go. Don't worry about the IG or YouTube. I don't have anything really to share, but if you could mention my name in the video, that would be cool. Thanks a lot. So again, this was won by Luke. I think it's Wilkinson. Luke Wilkinson won this helmet. So super big thank you. Uh, we are gonna sign this in the back. I put a set of goggles on here so we don't uh, sign it in the wrong spot. I think he wants it right here. Not bad. I think this one was the most difficult to sign because it's like more curved than any other ones. Because there was such a good response, I think moving forward, I'm going to like kind of make this a thing where I take stuff from the videos and do a signed thing and basically put it up uh, for the price of shipping and you know see what just see what happens. It's kind of a win-win. Uh, it goes towards helping the YouTube channel and then also people can get pieces of memorabilia and stuff. And I think moving forward, the next piece is going to be this Banshee radiator cover. So this is a brand new radiator cover if you guys watched. This was from the Voodoo Banshee series when I compared the plastics. I had the Meyer plastics, the uh, Chinese plastics, the eBay plastics, which is this one, and then OEM. And uh, truth is, I would never sell this as a functional piece, and I'm never going to use it because the fitment was just so bad. So I don't know what I would do with this thing. It kind of feels like a sin to just throw it out. I, I just had it sitting in my parts collection. So what I'm gonna do is sign this. I won't sign it right now. I'll do the same thing like I did with these. Uh, whoever does win this, uh, I'll sign it where they want and everything and mention them in the video. And this is a cool piece, I think, to hang on the wall or something. So, or, or you can throw it in the trash. I don't really care. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, this will be the next piece. So that will be in the eBay store. All right, guys, let's get back to the video. Well, guys, there you have it. Now you've seen my 2003 Z400, or as the British would call it, the Z400. We've got a long road ahead of ourselves here, and uh, I don't think we're truly gonna know what the condition of this thing is until we sandblast it and look inside the engine. So I think in the next video, maybe we'll try to get this thing started. I don't know though, we definitely need to tear this thing down. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, that helps me out tremendously. Also consider subscribing for more content like this. Also wanna give a big shout out to Michael Fisher for donating this machine to the channel. I mean, it's clear that it was very valuable and you know somebody really cared about this thing, obviously. They definitely garage kept it and took really good care of it. Uh, also, thank you to Power Sports Nation for facilitating uh, getting it to me. And uh, yeah, we've got a we've got a really fierce machine here on our hands. I'll see you guys in the next video. I need to go contemplate my spending habits.